Well, hi there. Welcome to BSF Recovery Team. If you've been keeping up with our videos, you'll know that we recently broke the driver's front leaf spring in the wrecker. So we're out here in the garage, and guess what we get to do? That's right. We're putting a new driver's front leaf spring in. Now, as you can see, we got the wrecker up on jack stands, supported by the frame. We have the axle in the droop position. Uh, we have a floor jack underneath the axle. Uh, not too much pressure on it, just enough so when we take things apart, it's not going to fall to the ground. First thing, let's take the bottom shock bolt out. All right, our shock is free. Next thing we want to do is we want to clean all the dirt and mud off of our U-bolt threads. We'll do that with a wire brush. Yeah, we already did most of it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some lube on them. And hopefully they come loose. And we're in luck. They've all come loose. There we go. In case some of you are wondering what this link is for, we added that link to try and relieve some of the stress off of the leaf spring right here, exactly where it broke, under the hard turning situations. When you have a push-pull drag link system, like we still have on the wrecker, in certain turning situations it puts a lot of stress on the, on the spring leaf right here where we broke it. Now with the U-bolts removed, we're going to let our floor jack down a little bit and get all the pressure off of the spring. Like that. Now we can take the shackle bolts out and the front spring eye bolt and remove our springs. Or our spring pieces. Okay, with our shackle bolt out, we can now get the main leaf out. See that? That's right where she broke. Now to get the other spring eye bolt out, right up here. take care of that. You're going to have to break that free by hand. Oh. Might need a little more leverage on the inside. Alright, let's try that. Oh. Now we can pry that out. All right, we got our new spring, we got our old spring. What do we need? Ah, our new spring doesn't come with bushings, so we had to get a bushing pack. Now, by now some of you might be saying, why are you just replacing one spring? You should be replacing them both. Well, that's true. Most of the time you replace springs in pairs. But, in this case, I called up Superlift and I talked to them to find out if there's any specification change in the springs that they have now compared to the lift spring that I bought back in 2008. And they assured me that there wasn't. So all we have in the difference in the new spring to the old spring that's in the passenger side would be spring fatigue. So, if the tow truck were a show queen or a pavement princess, we might be worried about that. But as you all know, this truck spends its life out in the woods. And I don't really care if there's a little bit of difference between one spring and the other when we got one on the hook and we're trying to get out of the woods. Okay, we've taken our shackle apart off of the old leaf spring 
and now we're ready to assemble it into the new leaf spring with the new leaf spring bushings. We have enough bushings here for two springs, we only need one. We have the collars. You'll notice that there's two different thicknesses of collars. So you have to make sure that you install the collars and the bushings in the right ends of the spring. One's the front end, one's the rear end. Front end takes a larger bolt than the shackle. So of course the thicker collar with a smaller diameter hole is the one for the shackle. The thinner collar with a larger diameter hole is the one for the spring eye bushing or the front bushing. So we have to determine which end of the spring is the front. Well, on lift springs, that's usually easy to do because you have a caster shim here. The caster shim actually reduces the caster angle of the axle. And the reason for that is, is to tip your pinion up a little bit so the front U-joint doesn't bind. So the thicker part of this is the front end of the spring. So this is our front. This is what will get the thinner collar for the larger bolt. Okay, so what's the easiest way to put the bushings in? Well, the easiest way I've found is to first put a little silicone grease on the polyurethane bushing, push the bushing into the spring eye, from each side till they're all the way in and then port the bushing on a solid surface like our table here grab our thin collar because we're at the front end of the spring with the larger bolt Put a little silicone grease on that. And then push that in. So sometimes it takes a little persuasion. There you have it. Now we do the other end. Again, each half of our bushing, a little silicone grease, push that into the spring eye. that into the spring eye and now this is the shackle end with the smaller bolt so it's the thicker collar. Nope, put a little lube on that. Everything works better with a little lube, right? Tap that one in. Just like that. Now we can assemble our shackle. Now, on this particular one, because our header is uh, kind of a close fit by the spring shackle we want to make sure the bolt head side is towards the header because there's very little clearance there. Now I don't know about you in your part of the woods but in my part of the woods we always like to put uh, things together with a lot of never-sees 
Because you never know when you have to take it apart again. Snug that up, the bottom's out on the collar. There we go. Now we're ready to put the spring in the truck. One thing I've noticed when installing a new spring with new bushings is sometimes it doesn't want to fit up in here because sometimes the pocket gets squeezed tight a little bit. So an easy way to fix that is before you try and put the spring in, grab it with a crescent wrench and pull it out just a little bit. Now we can slide our spring between the axle and the truck. Even though we flared it, it's still a tight fit. There's no real easy way to do this. You just kind of got to manhandle it, persuade it into place. Once you get it close where you can see a little bit of the collar showing through the bolt hole, you can uh, use an alignment punch and carefully tap that in there. Now we got this one almost in place, but this side's down quite a bit yet. So Another little trick for that is to grab your leaf springs with a crescent wrench and turn it till it lines up. And we're in. Now we can put the shackle in together. Oops, almost forgot to tighten up our front spring eye bolt. There we go. Now, one of the key things you want to make sure you do is get all of the dirt and any rust or scale off of the spring pad on the axle before you put it up into place. Now, getting the... Getting the axle position back in the right place can sometimes be a little bit of a pain. It's going to take a little bit of manhandling. And in our case, the axle's got to go towards the back of the truck a little bit. And I'm not strong enough to do that all by myself. So, we're going to enlist the help of a ratchet strap. With the ratchet strap looped around the axle and back to the shackle, we can now get our axle lined up in the right spot. But we still have to come towards us or the spring has to go that way a little bit towards the passenger side of the truck. And a little bit more than I can do by hand. So again, we're going to use a ratchet strap or come along between the two springs. And that will either pull the axle this way or the spring that way. Either way, it will help us line up the spring center bolt into the uh, axle pad. Well, that was one notch too far. 
I can actually see the head of spring center bolt looking up from the bottom here. Make sure I have it lined up just right. Then we jack up the axle to keep pressure on it. Now with upward pressure on our axle, compressing our spring, the spring center bolt in place, we should be able to take the ratchet straps off, everything will stay in place and we can put our U-bolts together. Okay, now for the U-bolts. Make sure that your spring is clean. And uh, even with U-bolts, sometimes they don't quite line up with the bolt holes on the spring pad. That's where a nice big channel locks like this one comes in handy. A little squeeze and they slide right in. like that. And the washers. And the lock nuts. And we'll snug the U-bolts up. And there we are, all back together, except for the shock bolt. One last tip though, when doing spring work, retorque the U-bolts. Take a couple of test drives, and retorque the U-bolts in between, at least two or three times, especially with brand new U-bolts. Thanks for watching VSF Recovery Team. Subscribe to our channel, share our videos, keep wheeling, be safe out there, and maybe we'll see you in the woods.